So tonight... Are you filming? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> tonight is uh, the long-awaited and overdue uh, interview with Suna Vobeda. Um, it was brought to us um, by some people on our Facebook page, and even some questions specifically for her were taken down. I think there's been a lot of curiosity and a lot of perhaps even misunderstandings uh, about her. So I, after begging, pleading, <laughs> and having to do a lot of bartering, got her to sit down for 10 minutes for this. And I actually think people will really get a lot out of it. She is skeptical as usual, but she trusts. The next video will be of you. Yeah, well, they're not interested in the me. The next 10 videos will be of you. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't do anything but the... The pet sitting and the dog walking. But the behind the, the scenes. And the, mm -hmm. and the behind the scenes. You're actually the one... You're the muse here. And you're interesting. People found it interesting. They asked a lot of questions. Um, so the, it's kind of a get-to-know-you format. I think some of the basics to start were... Where were you born? No way. Shashpa. Shashpa. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it like growing up there? I guess that could be, uh, yeah, anything. Really. Um, well, it was uh, likely like growing up in any other place, I guess, except colder than many other places. It's a nice country to grow up in. It's good. And people are a bit more, uh, are a bit colder than Americans. Most Americans are, because Americans are really friendly, warm, um, nice people. Norwegians are nice people too, they're just harder to get to know, I guess. Mm -hmm. Days and nights uh, stood out to me during the year that I was there. Okay. The latitude and longitude, uh, Norway reaches into the Arctic Circle, which I think a lot of people may not realize. Um, Question, how did your mom and dad, who were respectively both very passionate about astrology and astronomy, influence you? Uh, I think it influenced me in the way that uh, I have always gotten both sides. You know, I've had the science and I've had the spiritual. So I've, uh, I've thanks to them, always been able to see both sides and I've been very critical of each side. I've been critical of the spiritual side, and I've been critical of the science side. Um, and I think I've come to the conclusion that there is a balance between the two, that they're connected. The science is very strongly connected to the spiritual, and the spiritual would, is, is very connected to the science, right? There will be not, there can't be one without the other. Mm -hmm. um, well said. There's an incident you've written about before that seemed to be a defining moment um, in recognizing that you were perhaps different than most of us. Um, I'm not sure if you would have known it at the time. It's likely more clear now. Can you share again, and you have written about it in a blog before, a little bit about that? Um, could we perhaps take the cut and cut together? <laughs> Guy needs to take him out. Okay. Okay, we've moved into the house. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> uh, there's an incident you've written about in a couple blogs. I know, I think, I don't know, you were a younger girl. But to, to me, uh, it would seem like it could, could have been a defining moment in recognizing that you were born a little bit different in some well, you know what, I've th thought about that a lot. When did I first uh, notice that I, I guess that I, I really wanted to work with animals and dogs in particular. Um, and uh, I think there were many defining moments in that way. But like several others that have gone the same path or uh, and that are a lot further than me along and down the road, but... Um, it was uh, once when my uh, Afghan hound killed and ate my guinea pigs. Oh, wow. That was likely the, f the first time because my mom got so um, angry and, and frustrated and sad, you know, devastated. The, the dog killed our guinea pigs. But I was likely around 12 at that moment and I told her, but 
You gotta realize they were my guinea pigs. I love them. And I said that you gotta realize that it's a dog, and dogs hunt, and dogs kill, and dogs eat. That's what they do, and you can't punish her for her natural behavior. And that was a fault. sight hound, if I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hound. Even more prone to right be hunting. That would be more of a natural response yeah, than even some. They have a very strong prey drive, and animals that move, and of course they want to hunt. Yeah. And they, yeah. Mm -hmm. So your reaction to that, you think, helped you? In yeah, even though I was sad, I yeah. was upset. I still didn't want the dog to be put down or anything like that. And while, but I never saw them as humans either. You know, it wasn't. I, I guess I've never been the one who, who will um, really baby the dogs. I guess because I, I guess I, I've had. I've grown up with dogs that are so wild in one way mm. that I've, I've seen, and, and many dogs at the same time, so that you see that, you know, if you baby them, that it won't help. It yeah, will make especially, worse, so. I think it's critical to, to know the, the kind of dogs that you, she was raised with, a Brasoi, Russian wolfhound, that so the Afghan, sweetest yes. dogs out there, and dogs with very little behavioral problems, actually, that, right. Typically, because they're very laid back, um, but when there's a lot of them together, it, it becomes a pack, and then you have a typical pack. Hey, baby, and he's so loud. So yeah. yeah. So there was many incidents like that when, say, when two dogs would uh, would attack a third, and I'd understand somehow why they did it, and I'd jump in between and and separate them from a very young age. And I didn't realize at the time that most people didn't jump into the middle of dog fights and, um, and separate the dogs. Uh, but uh, that was just natural for me, I guess. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, yeah, and I can honestly say somebody who's had a dog, I think since I can remember being five, I've never not had a dog and been a dog lover. It was something I, I recognized in you also with horses, but with the dogs that seemed different. We used to talk about it early on when I was in Europe. And I, I was wondering just how self-aware of it you were, because you seem so, you don't let, you don't talk about it much and you have a, such a humble approach about it, but it seemed very clear to me objectively looking at you there's almost like a wiring difference be able to tune into them in a way that not all of us can and i may have been around dogs for 39 years and have tremendous in insights but i can you know there's just a certain there's only so many things i could uh, do see, to I do to reach them i don't like to see it that way I, I like to see it more that i'm very interested in the topic maybe more interested maybe above average you know like uh, when i was uh, eight i and i had, I was reading very well. I read tons of books, and and I had like three different books about dog breeds, and I memorized them. I literally memorized them. I knew every uh, dog breed out there uh, twenty years ago, and uh, knew their height, average height, average weight, average temperament. You know where they were from, colors, and and uh, literally everything about them. What they were used for. So, and I still remember that today. I guess that's kind of like an As Asperger's uh, trait about me. But, um, so I, I love dog breeds. I'm so interested in and fascinated by it that I just want to learn more. Hmm. And that's, you know, I don't see myself as someone who knows more than other people. I just see myself as someone who is uh, maybe a, more interested in learning than, than most people would be because... Well, people are interested in different things, right? And I'm interested in, in dogs and dog be uh, dog behavior. I find that extremely fascinating, and I want to learn as much as I can. And I learn from every dog that I work with. And I, s and I see new things, I learn new things, and, and most importantly, I think that I've learned that dogs are individuals, and they're very different, and, and they need... Uh, can I ask you this? It's not even a, a question and in the notes, but what is it, and as we landed in the U.S., you were four or five months pregnant, so you didn't get a chance to do a lot of this, but what is it about the red zone and the extreme cases that that you're so intrigued by? Uh, because they, they can teach me the most. Yeah. That's where I can learn the most. 
it's not that I know everything and I'm going to go into uh, each case and, and, and teach the dog something or teach the people something. It's that I learn and are able to observe a situation and maybe able to um, observe it from the outside, not like the, the owner from the inside, and then be able to see what the solution is. But I don't go into a, a case knowing what the solution is. It's something I find out while observing. Of course. Uh, and just most of the time at least, you know, that's but that's so where some I people learn the most. some people would ask, aren't you afraid of being bitten and uh, you know, I've told people it's just kind of like I guess it's people well, what's your way to answer that? Are you uh you know, do you If so I think about it, I'll be bit. Yeah. If I worry about it, I'll be bit. And I'm not worried about it. Because it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, if, you, if you're if you around dogs who long enough, you will get bit at one point, and it's going to hurt a little, but that's it, basically. It's not, it's no big deal. It's just their way of, of it's a way for the dogs to communicate, um, and most of the times you'll avoid it. Yeah. Okay, I got a little, little off the topic of our head, actually, so we'll keep going in order of these questions. Um... When I met you online, you were toying with something called horse intuition. I was still in the U.S. What was it? Uh, what happened? Well, I wanted to... I have horses at the time. And still do. But uh, they're in Sweden and Norway. I don't remember how... Did I have two horses at the time? Yeah, I did. Uh, I was wanting to use horses to um, teach people um, about themselves. Basically, in either writing lessons, pro I, like I would go go to a person and, and teach them on their horse, or they could come and ride my horse. Because horses are, are as all animals, wonderful teachers, and they they're mirrors to us, and they show us what we need to work on. Right. So it's kind of like mindfulness, uh, right. horse riding. Right. It's not so much about what you can teach the horse, but what the horse, horse can, can teach, teach you. So horse intuition. Right. Uh, was Clever. I remember. Words. I remember seeing you create that Facebook page. And, and what happened was that I had no idea how to uh, run a business. <laughs> I still don't. And that's why <laughs> you're running the business. <laughs> that's why we make a good team. Yeah. It's yeah. I could not do anything without you. I'd be lost just sitting here and saying that I could do this, you know, but I don't know how. Yeah, um, yeah. really, I just want to help. That's what I want to do. I want to see more people, you know, w uh, in in good relationships with their dogs, uh, happy families where they they um, live in harmony and balance. Right. Okay. And I, this is one of the more interesting parts to me, and I think something that's important. You've had experience dealing with uh, energy work outside of the animal world, um, kind of practical energy work, I would say. It's something you don't talk a lot about. You used to, when I first met you, some of the, some of people know our story, but it's not relevant today, but we both met in a spiritual group, a typical spiritual group that would talk about anything from... Uh, just anything, really. But um, you don't talk about it much today. Uh, and uh, I think... Well, I don't talk about it because I don't like to be um, stereotyped. And I don't like to be uh, put in a box. Yeah. And I know a lot of people have a tendency of doing that when you say that I am this or I am that. So it wouldn't matter if I was Christian or Jewish or Muslim or a Buddhist to the way that I work with dogs so that's why it's irrelevant really what I what I do or what I don't do but energy yeah. work I, I I see the world as energy everything as energy and then you just need to know how to harness it and to be in balance yeah. So it ties into the animals, mm -hmm. clearly. For with, you know, it's it's very clear to me today, and it's been like watching a building take place and kind of getting to know you and and through our relationship and then the course of this business. I, uh, I mean, I'll share something just briefly that I experienced. 
we won't go too deep into this. People will think it'll move into the sci-fi channel, but I think uh, it's just worth sharing. And so again, Sunev and I met in a spiritual group, and we were both very into a lot of things we don't share so much on Facebook. So some of this is is new. We're into a lot of things we don't just often share publicly, um, or our beliefs become I think less important as the work that we're doing right now in the real world. But um, we used to talk about energy fields and auras and and all that sort of thing. And Sunova had a, a a unique ability to. Um, share or expand her energy field and I was a little taken aback and I, while I'm open-minded as people would probably think extremely I'm also skeptical and I remember one of the first night uh, first day or two on the boat uh, in England when we finally got together and started our life together she wanted to show me and it was as if she had probably done it to hundreds of people because she was confident and it was powerful and we actually recreated it again just I think yesterday when I wanted to or two days ago when I tried to get this interview up, but life has a way of keeping to push things back. Uh, can you, do you want to talk about it? Or can you share anything ab about that or wh how you did it? Uh, or I think it's just about being conscious, you know, and I think everybody can do, uh, can do this and become conscious of their own energy. And some people have a strong energy and others have a weaker energy, but that if people with a weaker energy can get a stronger energy yeah. by being aware of it. To share briefly, because I guess I didn't just say, uh, if, uh, in other words, she asked me to, to kind of close my eyes and to pay attention to an energy field passing through me. Um, we all have energy fields around us, and those of us, I think that if you study energy or in tune with it, believe that, and it's proven with science, we have energy fields we put off. Uh, when you can control it really well, Sunova, I think, has a unique ability to do it really well. And as she says, that's something everybody has the capacity to do. Mm -hmm. She's a huge proponent, and I think at one point wanted to teach people just that, but uh, it really has come through with the animal work. And I think it's, it ties together really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I mean, to me it ties together because, say, you have a dog that pulls on the leash. Um, you're not going to get it to stop pulling on the leash by, hey, don't pull, don't pull. But it's not about being physically strong and dominant of the dog. It's about being uh, having a stronger energy, mm -hmm. believing in yourself, believing that I can do this. Mm -hmm. This dog doesn't have to pull me. You don't have to. You don't have to be violent with the dog. You don't have to. Um, scream or shout you don't even have to use treats you don't even have to train it to walk nice next to you all you gotta do is change your energy and the dogs will sense it they sense that oh this is a stronger energy that I'm around and then then I don't have to pull and it, it is fascinating because the dogs sense it by the way they're not skeptics when it comes to energy they don't question they don't question nature I guess. Mm -hmm. And energy is a nature. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to touch much on this, but I just think it's, again, worth mentioning because it's an important part of what you were doing. And right as I arrived, uh, you were part of a small group, even holding classes um, in Norway about energy work. Would you say that's a fair assessment? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um... Let's see here, another question. Um, is it safe to say now that uh, Solgavi Animal Solutions and your skills... Um, the skill set that you have is... You're not fond of any terminology, animal communicator or a dog whisperer type person. You, you hate labels, but is it, is it uh, important to note that perhaps your broader purpose with animals is tied to energy work and healing? I mean, do you th think those things go together or...? Um, I think it's hard to explain, but... Mm. It, um, yeah, I don't know how to say it. It's like, um... I, I feel that, um... 
<gasps> it would be like you get a you get a rash all of a sudden, right? So, and you treat the rash, mm -hmm. and the rash goes away, and then it comes back a week later, and you treat the rash. Instead of treating the rash, I guess what I'm trying to do is is find out what causes the rash and fixing that. And to fix that would be like healing the healing the problem or the issue uh, that causes the dog the rash <laughs> right. to behave uh, in a way that is not desired. And it's usually usually has nothing to do with the dog. Right. Uh, so yeah, healing in, in the way that you are you are healing a situation. You're fixing a situation. Yeah. You're helping. Okay, there's one other question and then a couple fun ones to end um, that she doesn't know about that I have down that people asked. There will be fast ones. But uh, what is the difference between a dog trainer and a dog behaviorist, and why are they both important? I guess I like to say that a dog trainer is like a teacher and a behaviorist is like a psychologist. In a dog trainer is, is teaching the dog something, uh, but the the behaviorist goes in and looks at the problem, the issue at hand, how it can be fixed, what the dog needs. It can be imbalanced in the situation around it. Or it, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with training. Right. But they're both important, you, yeah, you've, yeah, you've yeah, said. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, what, what would you do without teachers? then you would learn anything. Right? Dogs need a certain level of obedience. They need to know certain things to be able to function well and be balanced in a home. And I don't need, that doesn't need to be like shake or roll over or things like that. But they need to know like weight, certain things. It, it depends on the family how much they need to know. Mm -hmm. Like how, how well you want your dog trained. I personally like that the dog knows out if they go into a room and I don't want them there. Leave it. Good commands. Mm -hmm. You know, sit, stay. It's good to know. That's why I think that dog training is really good. Also, dog training it um, is mental training for the dogs. Right. And a lot of dogs need that. They're right. so smart. They think so much. that They actually, you know, they need to stimulate their brains, but they're not getting any any of that so they can exhibit destructive behavior they can be you know, overly active an overly active dog can calm down a lot by getting some training alright some fun questions to end um, what is your favorite movie of all time I don't know that's so many I could say Matrix the Matrix likely one from the top ten at least. Is that where you got the name for your son? No. <laughs> That's a true fact. It isn't from the movie. Coincidental she said that. Uh, let's see here. How many countries have you lived in? Uh, four. That's it. No, I don't know. One, two, three, five. Maybe six. Depends on how long I'd have to live there to be counting, uh, but I'm living there. But I've had an address in, in five, five, did I say five countries? Uh -huh. Yeah. I think in every country that I, at least I've heard the stories that you lived in, uh, something was always tied heavily to animals. And even if you didn't arrive with that intention, it's what you left with. Yeah, it always ended up like that. You know, if I tried in one place to live without animals, I would be going nuts and uh, depressed, and then I would get back to animals again. Mm -hmm. If it was working in a stable or uh, shelters or whatever it was, I ended up with animals. Cool. All right, this is the get to know you as soon as any final words. Well, next week is, is going to be you, <laughs> or tomorrow, or whenever we start. Oh, home. God. I don't have a, as interesting a story, but I will honor that. Oh, for this. <laughs> Okay, tied to, to animals in our business. But yeah, this has been really great. It's been a nice to get a glimpse into Sunav, and I hope most of the questions that were submitted did get answered. Uh, if we post this on our page, which we will, and you have any other specific questions, ask. 
and she will be glad to answer, won't you? Um, sure. Okay. Bye-bye.